And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and a very popular fantasy-ish adventure game is The Legends of Andor. A lot of people like that game. I like it fine, but Z really enjoys it. A lot of people enjoy it. Well, now they made the same game, but now it's just called Andor, the family fantasy game, and this is definitely geared towards kids. Adults could play it, you can play it as a family, but it's definitely focused on kids playing an adventure game where you need to go, this wolf mother needs her three cubs back, you need to go get them back, but first you need to do some task, side quests as it will, and this is all before a dragon comes and destroys your city. Here's how it plays. <laughs> In this game, players are going to play one of four different heroes. Each hero has a number of action points, possibly a special ability. Dwarves can move from cave to cave. And a certain number of dice that they're going to get of their color. And the dice are all different for the different fact people who are playing. You're going to play with some missions. These are on the side of the board here. You always have a start card and an end card. You must find three wolf cubs. You have to do that to win the game. And in between, you'll put some other missions that you need to do first. Because before you can cross this bridge here, the guard at the bridge says you have to complete those tasks. So this would be in game one. You would play with tasks one and two, then three and four, then five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then you can mix them up and play any number of tasks you want. There's going to be some extra tokens put on the board because of these tasks, and the rules in the rule book will tell you there's a pile of tokens for that purpose. Players are going to take turns in the daytime until they all run out of action tokens. You're going to have uh, sun action tokens on your board, and you'll remove them as you use them. And when they're all gone, you're done. When everyone's done, it becomes night phase, in which case they'll fill back up. But the bad guys will also be doing things. You can pay one sun point to move, and, and the number of spaces you move is the number of sun points you use. If you decide to stay in the same space, you pay a sun point. If you're done and there's a fog token there, these are randomly put at the beginning of the game, you reveal it. This one shows that a monster shows up in the number two area here. So there's a monster over here. Now, sometimes they're bad like that, but sometimes they're good. This here gives you a telescope, which lets you look at a token on the board. This gives you a sword token, which could be used in combat in the future. This gives you a coin, which can be used later on to buy, if you're in town or in other spots, you can buy torches. This gives you wood. At any point, you can put a wood token here, if you're by the watchtower, to drive the dragon back of space. Players, if they're at a well, can use the well, turning it over, to get three time tokens back. Each night the wells will refresh, but it is one way to move around the board quicker if need be. Now players are also going to be fighting the bad guys when they get there. So depending on where they fight the bad guys. So let's say I'm fighting a bad guy here in space four. I need two swords. So let's say, for example, I'm the archer. I'm going to roll three dice. I need swords. I got none. So that's it. I can stay in the same spot and fight the, the monster again. But remember, when you stand still, you still have to pay a movement token. Here I got two. That's enough. The monster is killed, and the dragon moves back one spot. If I had only rolled one, I could leave it there and spend another one to try to get another sword. Or if I have a sword token, I could use that to help defeat the monster. Monsters will keep appearing and reappearing. Eventually, you will get enough stuff done, your tasks done, um, to get past the dwarf here, whatever the task might be. And then you're going to go in here, and you're going to be rolling dice to try to get torch icons. So there's swords in these dice, but there's also torch icons. You roll a torch icon, you can reveal that. Set many of them are going to cause the dragon to move, but you're looking for the three wolf cubs. Once you find them, you win the game. There's a few other bad tokens and things in the box. At nighttime, and sometimes because of the tiles that you've drawn, the dragon is going to move. You're going to roll a die, which will cause the dragon to move one, two, or occasionally three spaces towards the town. If the dragon ever gets there, the, the players lose the game. 
So the players need to find the three wolf cubs before the dragon gets there. Uh, as monsters are added to the board, if there's enough monsters, they're also moving following these footprints. Each time a monster moves into town, the dragon will also move. The only way to make the dragon move backwards is through special things that might happen, putting wood here on the tower, and defeating monsters. Also, the number of monsters that come out will depend on where the dragon is at any given point. So that's pretty much the game. Players are just trying to get there. Like I mentioned, there's special abilities. The wizard has a, a single die. If he rolls a lightning bolt, he kills the monsters straight out. Dwarves can move from cave to cave. Warriors are good at fighting. The elf has a lot of movement points. And then each mission is different, whether you're going around trying to collect different plants or getting enough wood, you know, forts, to you got a journey to the three forts and remove them by rolling two swords. There's all kinds of things in here, and each one explains how it works. As always, I like games that give you art two different art per character. If I want to be this warrior or that warrior, if I want to be this mage or that mage, that dwarf or this dwarf. They still look a little samey, um, in my opinion. You know, there's both blonde hair, blue eyes on these, and they're both blonde hair, blue eyes in the back. But other than that, the, uh, the board looks cool. The tokens are neat. The monsters are good. I like when you have these, these tasks. When you're finished, you turn it over to show that it is indeed done. You turn over the end card no matter what to show whether you've lost or won. Yeah, it's good art, and everything fits easily in the box. The dice are nice quality. They're wooden dice. I, I like them. Fantastic game for kids. The, the concept is not difficult. You spend the movement. You got to go around. They say, do this task. Collect the plants. Um, take this wounded pigeon, or falcon, I'm sorry, wounded falcon back to the city. Go defeat these forts. Go do this. You just go do it. But along the way, you have other things. You're good at fighting. Go fight some of the monsters. You're good at exploring the cave at the end. You explore the cave. We'll fight the monsters. These aren't heavy, difficult decisions, and they work really well, and the game is a fun family romp of adventure. Now, there is a lot of luck. There's a lot of luck. At the end of the game, you need to turn over those, those tiles, and you might turn over a bunch of dragons in a row and makes you lose. It's just the way it is. Um, you might fight the monsters, and you just keep rolling poorly. So I've seen some of these games end in luck, but I do like that the game, it's easy to make it more difficult or easier, play with just two missions, before you go do things, you, that usually gives you plenty of time. Two missions is fairly easy to beat. Three missions is much more difficult, but the game has that nice variety in it. So this is definitely a stepping stone style game. You're playing this before you play the bigger, more grandiose adventure games. But I think it does so in a nice way, and the four different characters are very distinct in how they play. You play the elf, you have lots of movement. You play the warrior, you're the fighter. You play the mage, you're also kind of a fighter, but in a different way. And each one has distinct enough things, but you don't have to look up an FAQ to figure out what they do. It's very, very straightforward. Very much recommend it for families. Cosmos knows how to nail these out like this. So if you like the original one, this is similar, but this is gonna, be, this is gonna feel too simplistic for you. Um, but if you like the original one and found it was maybe too high of a level for your kids, it's not. So a lot of kids can play the, the original one. But for younger kids, I think this one is going to really do well. So that's Andor, the family fantasy game. I like it. I'm Tom Vassell. You've been watching the Dice Tower. Dice Tower Judgment, kid approved.